Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Viveza 3, which is part of the Nick Collection 4. I know, 3, 4. I kind of wish they'd get all this together. Anyway, they had uh, a recent announcement about the Nick Collection version 4 coming out with some updates, including Viveza 3 getting a new user interface and better control points, things like that. I talked about all that in this first look video that I linked to up there, but what I wanted to do today is walk through kind of a sample workflow in Viveza 3 because I used to use the Knit Collection all the time, and while I used mostly Color Effects Pro, um, I did use Viveza some, and I feel like it's, you know, it's getting better, it's come a long way, and that sort of thing. And this uh, review that I did in that first look video that I pointed to a moment ago kind of got me re-interested in Viveza 3. I thought I'd jump in, walk through, and edit, kind of see what this thing's all about, and just have fun really so let's take a look here is a sunset and um, if you haven't seen the new user interface hey the user interface is new it's more modern it's just more current it's better to be honest i like it a lot better um, on the left hand side are various presets i'm going to use this fill light as a preset uh, to start with and i'm going to get rid of that side menu which i just did so on the right hand side here you have a histogram which i'm not really going to use and you have the loop if you want to zoom in also not going to use that. I am going to use global adjustments, selective tones, and selective adjustments, which is where the control points are that really give you a lot of nice control over the photo. So let's go ahead and hop in. The first thing I want to do is add a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to go to, you know, whoops, uh, maybe about a 20 or so. And I'm going to do the same thing on saturation. Maybe give that about a 20. And then I'm going to come down here to warmth, and I'm going to warm that up at about 15. It is a sunset, as you can see. This was taken in Victoria, Canada a number of years ago. Anyway, looking good color-wise and all that, but obviously way too dark. So highlights are going to come down. I just want to make sure that they kind of stay under control there in the sky. I am going to lift the mid-tones a little bit more, so maybe mid-30s. And I'm going to lift the shadows a bit more as well. I'm going to go like low 50s, something about like that. And I'm going to leave the blacks at 8. So, you know, so far, if I hold down the before and after, there it is before and after. And this one, of course, is a split screen. You can see much warmer looking sunset, better visibility, all that kind of stuff. And let me go back to this. And... It's one of the nice things about Viveza. It's really about light and color, right? And those are the two things I'm primarily working on here in this photo. So I feel like I've got a pretty good base edit so far, but this is where I start jumping into selective adjustments. Now, if you wanted to further refine the temperature, you can click on white balance, come in here. You can see it's kind of defaulting to something, but you can come in here and make adjustments as necessary. I'm not doing that here. I don't feel like I need it. I'm gonna go back to what I had before. And again, the before and after, you know, pretty good ways, much warmer sunset, much brighter, but still a few things I want to fix. So the first thing in selective adjustments is that I want to add two control points over here in the sidewalk area. There you go. And I'm going to make these both a little bit bigger. And we're going to do something about like that and something about like that. And what I want to do is I want to group them together, which you can do. So click those two. I'm going to create a group and I'm gonna rename that group Sidewalk. And this allows me to edit them as a group as opposed to individually editing each control point. So now that I've done that, I wanna go into Luminance and Chrominance and take a look at the mask. So I'm gonna turn that on. This is the mask view. If you click that button there, and it's highlighting the entire group, as you can see. And Luminance and Chrominance allow you to further refine that mask. If I drag the Luminance to the right, you can kind of see what's happening. I just want to make sure I don't spill too much over into the water with what I'm doing here. And Chrominance, I usually, honestly, I just play with both of these sliders. I don't have any particular routine. I'm not really seeing a big difference with Chrominance. But Luminance, I think, had a nice little effect. I think something about like that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the mask view so that I can see the photo. And now I'm down here. In fact, hang on. I like to close the global adjustment menu because otherwise you have all this stuff and you're kind of scrolling and you're like, where's my stuff? Um, I like to see my stuff. So I'm in selective adjustments. I've got two control points on the left-hand side as a group. I've renamed it Sidewalk. And now I'm over here and I just want to kind of make a few adjustments. So first thing I'm going to do is brighten it up and you will see the entire sidewalk area is getting brighter because both control points are being controlled at the same time. Tiny bit of contrast here, maybe a little bit like that, maybe a tiny bit more brightness. I do want to have visibility into that gentleman walking toward me. Um, and then 
here's where I'd normally add structure. And I got to admit, like the structure in Viveza is not really adding what I consider structure. So in other apps, like in Luminar and in On One, I add structure and it adds a little bit of crunch and that sort of thing. I'm not seeing a lot of that. So when I drag it to the right, it's getting a little bit darker, but it doesn't seem to be getting any crunchier. So could be that I don't understand what they mean by structure, but other apps, structure kind of seems to mean one thing. It seems to me so far, it doesn't really do the same thing that I think structure should do in this app. So normally this is where I drag that up. But as I said, this app for me is more about light and color, less about crunchy detail kind of stuff. And therefore I'm not really using structure very much. So now if I come over here and turn off this grouping of edits on that sidewalk, which is my uh, two control points, if I turn that off, you can see there it is much darker and now much brighter. So I think that looks pretty good. That's really what I wanted to do is create more visibility in that area. And now what I wanna do is add more control points, this time to the water and the sky. So I'm gonna come in here and click away. I'm gonna get three down there and I'm gonna get you know three or four up here, something like that. And all I've done is just create these. And what I want to do now is make them a bit bigger. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, I think I've got all that. Now what I want to do is create a group again because the edits are going to be the same across all of these. And that's something when I'm doing sky and there's a reflection of the sky, I want to make sure the temperature, the, you know, the tint, the saturation level, all that kind of stuff goes together. Another reason why groups are so powerful here because otherwise you're going from one control point to the next and making different edits each time. And then you go into the sky and you're like, wait, let me go back to the first one, see what I did. Oh, okay, I need to make warmth of five or whatever, right? So this grouping here is gonna allow me to do all that at once, which I think is a nice thing to have. So I'm also gonna activate the mask view here and I'm doing it just for this sky. So I'm gonna come in here and drag luminance to the right. I find that I'm generally dragging luminance to the right and I'm not doing a whole lot with chrominance. But, I mean, it does have an impact. You can also come in here and while these are highlighted, you can move some of these things around and further refine how this mask is being applied in your image if you would like to. So I think I'm kind of okay with that to be honest. So I'm gonna turn off the mask view. I'm gonna bring a little bit of brightness into the sky and the water. I wanna pop that up a little bit and you can see kind of what's happening here. I'm gonna also give it a little bit of saturation. I do like my colors and this app, in my opinion, is really about light and color based on the kind of stuff you can do. So that's kind of nice. Here's where I'd normally go kind of negative with structure to soften it up. But like I said, I'm not seeing really much of a difference. So I'm just gonna drop that. I'm gonna increase shadows a bit as well. And that's gonna help me with that little bit of bottom area there. And the warmth, I'm gonna go a little bit to the right to create a little bit more warmth. And then one of the nice things they have is these different color channels here. So there's green. Now I don't want green, but I do like the opposite of green, which is magenta. So to me, this operates a little bit like a tint slider. So I'm gonna take the green and I'm gonna go a little bit left and just create a little bit more magenta look because I like that in my sunsets, simply just personal preference. And I've also got this selective tone area if I wanna come in here and make any further refinements. Maybe I wanna bump up the shadows a little bit more. You can see if I really drag it to the right, it's getting very bright. I don't want to do that. Maybe mid-tones would come up a tiny bit, maybe a tiny drop in highlights. I think that's probably pretty fine, but that's given me a lot of control. Let me show you the before and after. That's what we started with, and there we are now. So if I do a before and after slider, you can see, honestly, a massive, massive difference in the photo. And a lot of that is down to the control points and no pun intended, but the amount of control they give you over specific areas. And this luminance and chrominance color selectivity section in this control point area for selective adjustments, really powerful, really gives you better fine tune control over that mask and therefore where your edits apply in the photo. I think the only other thing I might would do is add a couple of more control points and get in here with these boats. And what I wanna do is create a little bit smaller area, something pretty focused on these boats, because I'm noticing the boats are getting a bit of a blue tint, and I don't really want a blue boat. I feel like they should be a little bit whiter with the color or the lack of color, white. Uh, and so once again, I'm gonna group these, I'm gonna call this boats, and I'm gonna go into mask view. Once again, you can see it's pretty well selected them. Again, adjusting the luminance will help there, and you can see I've honestly got a pretty good selection right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. And what I wanna do is basically just increase the brightness a little bit of those boats, which is gonna help them appear a little bit more white. I'm gonna take the saturation down so it's not so blue. 
and maybe give them a little bit of warmth as well. Maybe not very much. I need to be careful there. So you can kind of see, I think this one needs to be refined a little bit, that mask, and maybe repositioned a little bit. And I want to go check my mask view again. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So that's what the boats were like before I did this grouping of control points for the boats. And when I turn that back on, you can see that's what they look like now. So less blue, a little bit brighter, that sort of thing. I could probably refine that a little bit in terms of the reduction in saturation and the brightness. And the other nice thing is, of course, you can add just more control points if you want to get more specific. Like the front of this boat right here might need a separate control point because it's not picking up quite enough of that blue reduction for my taste. The point is you have that kind of control. You can go in and customize it and really basically hone in or zoom in, so to speak, on specific areas. But that's a workflow example and kind of a quasi tutorial on Viveza 3 new user interface, much better use of control points without luminance and chrominance for refining the masks. Just gives you great control. And one more time, if I do a before and after, I mean, honestly, we had a massive, massive impact on this photo, starting like that, ending like that, one more time, before and after. And that's how I use Viveza 3, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for hanging out, stopping by, that sort of stuff. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll catch you in the next video. You guys take care of yourselves. See you soon, and adios.